Chapter 5, Section 2, moving on to the ADEPT level. This one we're going to learn to do some factoring. Now this is something that is definitely new uh, from grade 10 math. Uh, what is factoring? Well, one way to think about it is it's the reverse of the distributive law or the rainbow rule. So for example, if I have 3 times x minus 2. Okay? If I asked you to multiply or expand this, you would use distributive law or nicknamed the rainbow rule. So this would give me 3x minus 6. Well, what is factoring? Well, factoring, we would begin with 3x minus 6, and we want to go the other way and create the 3 out front uh, with an x minus 2 in brackets. So again, factoring is just the reverse of the rainbow rule. Well, how do we do that? Well, here's a trinomial. I have 3x squared plus 9x minus 12. In order to do this process, we need to determine the greatest common factor okay, between all three of these terms, just like in the previous video. So we have 3, 9, and 12. Well, with the numbers, the greatest common factor is just 3. Okay? For the x's, this has an x squared, this has an x. This doesn't have any factors of x. Okay? So my greatest common factor cannot include any factors of x, because it would have to be found in all of them. So the GCF is just 3. So what we do is we write the 3 in front. Okay? And we just take the trinomial and mentally, in our minds, we divide each term by a 3. So if I have a 3x squared, but I've divided off a 3, what's left? Just the x squared. Okay? Next one, I have positive 9x. Well, if I've divided away a 3, what's left? 3x, positive 3x. Okay. Next, I have negative 12. If I've divided out positive 3, what's left? negative 4. Okay, so now this kind of looks like this, what I have up here. Okay. How can you check? The nice thing about factoring is you can always check to see whether or not you did it right. And I'd recommend that you do this at least in the early stages until you get comfortable with it. Because if you're going on in pre-calculus and eventually calculus, you're going to do this a lot. Okay, so we're just going to multiply it out again using distributive law. Okay. So that's going to give me 3x squared plus 9x minus 12. Okay, do I end up back where I started? Yes, I do. So I know that this has to be correct. Now, don't worry if you're a little bit confused. Okay, you're not going to master factoring just by seeing one example done. Okay, you've got to practice it over and over. So 4x cubed plus 18x squared plus 20x. Okay, so if our goal is to factor this trinomial. We first need to determine what is the greatest common factor. Okay, what can we factor out, so to speak? So with the numbers 4, 18, and 20, the greatest common factor, it's not 4 because... 18 is not divisible by 4. The greatest common factor, at least for the coefficients, is 2. That's the best I can do. The x's, however, I have x cubed, x squared, and an x. Ah, well, I can factor out an x. Okay. So now that I've identified the greatest common factor, that is what I effectively pull out of this trinomial, so to speak, by dividing. Because remember, division is the opposite of multiplication. So let's just look at each term one by one. 4x cubed. If I divide out a positive 2x, what's left over from this term? Well, I'd still have a 2. I had an x cubed. I took out an x. So that means I have an x squared left over. Next term, I have positive 18x squared. If I divide out a positive 2x, I have positive 9x left over. Last term, positive 20x. If I divide out a 2x, well, if I divide out 2 from 20, 
that leaves me with positive 10. I had an x, but I divided out that x, so there's actually nothing more I need to write. So this is done. But let's check. You can always check to see if we've factored it correctly. Since we divided, all we have to do is multiply it out again using distributive law. Okay. So multiplying these terms together gives 4x cubed plus 18x squared plus 20x. And let's compare it to the original expression. Yep, looks okay to me. Therefore this is correct. Next example, 12x squared minus 36x plus 6. Okay, so let's first identify the greatest common factor. So 12, negative 36, uh, 6. That's the best I can do. And, well, I actually can't do any better than 6 because this constant here doesn't have any variables at all. So no x's can go here. So that 6 is what is to be divided out of all three of these terms in this trinomial. So we just have to write the three terms, whatever's left. So dividing everything by 6 leaves me with 2x squared minus, watch your signs here, 6x plus 1. Why the 1 and not 0? Well, remember when we're factoring, we're not subtracting, we're dividing. Okay, so if I factor out a 6 from every term, I have to divide, and 6 divided by 6 is 1. Okay, so this looks okay, but let's just do a check. Let's multiply everything out. Again, eventually you won't need to do this. You can just check by staring at it. But we're early, early on learning something new. Some people need a little bit more. This gives me 12x squared minus 36x plus 6. And I believe that matches what I have here. So this is correct. 21x to the fourth minus 14x cubed plus 7x squared. Right, let's first look at the coefficients. And 7, oh, all of these are divisible by 7. That's the best I can do. And, oh, x squared. All right. So I'm going to divide 7x squared out of all three of these. And we're just going to write what's left. So 21x to the fourth, if I've divided it by 7x squared, what's left over, we get 3x squared. Next term, this is a minus 14x cubed, dividing out positive 7. I have minus 2. And I had x cubed, x squared, so this is just x. And the last one, I was actually able to factor out this entire monomial. Okay, this turned out to be the GCF, so this is just positive 1. Okay, let's do another check. I'm not going to show the arrows this time. This is going to give me 21x to the fourth minus 14x cubed plus 7x squared. Check. Does it match? Sure does. We're good. All right, now they're starting to get a little bit nastier. 5x squared, y squared, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let's factor this. Let's first figure out the greatest common factor. So we have 5, a negative 7, and a 13. Hmm. All of these are prime, so they have no factors other than 1 in themselves. So, well, that's really the best I can do for the coefficients is a 1. And the x squared, x, oh, there are no x's here, so I can't put any x's here either. I have a y squared, y squared again, and a y. Okay, so 1 times y is just y. We don't need to write the 1 anymore. Okay, so that is 
That's the best I can do. So I'm going to take all three of these terms and divide out a y. So that's going to leave me with 5x squared y minus 7xy plus 13. Okay. Now let's just do a, a quick mental check. Okay, if I was to apply distributive law once again, everything in here would just get multiplied by y. Okay, so multiplying here, I get 5x squared y squared, which is what I had here. Here I would have negative 7xy squared, which is what I have. And y times positive 13 is 13y. So this is good. All right, we have a crazy one here, but eh, I'm not scared. I think it'll be okay. So let's just look at the coefficients. 50, negative 100, and 25. Well, I can tell already that the greatest common factor with the coefficients is 25. That's all right. Let's look at the x's. x to the fourth, x cubed, x cubed. Well, the biggest one shared by all is x cubed. y cubed, y to the fourth, y to the fifth. So it's y cubed. That's the best I can do. All right. So that is what I factor out of this trinomial. So 25x cubed y cubed. So let's write out what's left. So dividing this term by this GCF here, I'm going to have a 2x, okay? Because it had a y cubed, but a y cubed actually came out, so nothing else goes here. Minus 100, well, that's just a minus 4x cubed, okay? And then most of this actually came out. I just have a y squared left. Okay, because 25, if I divide it by 25, I have 1. Well, there's no need for me to write the 1. Okay, so this looks okay. Let's do a mental check. Multiply this in my head, I would get 50x to the fourth y cubed. Check. Multiplying this and my middle term, I would get negative 100x cubed y to the fourth. Check. And then this times y squared, I would get 25x cubed y to the fifth. Perfect. All right, the next section just says missing factors. Um, well, this is actually easier than what we've been doing. We have a trinomial and it's the factoring process has already been started. We just have to figure out um, what's missing. So I had a negative 6x squared y plus 12xy minus 12y. And we can see a 6y has already been factored out out of all three of these terms. So what goes in the brackets here? Well, whatever's left over from these three terms. So look at the first term, negative 6x squared y. Well, if I divide out a 6y, okay, I'm going to have negative x squared. Okay? And in fact, you could multiply this out in your head right now. See if you'd get this first term back. And I believe you do, yep. Next term, positive 12xy. If I divide out positive 6y, I'm left with positive 2x. Okay. And I'll just complete that multiplication in my mind. Multiplying these together gives me 12xy. Yep, perfect. Minus 12y, dividing out 6y gives me minus 2. The y was there, but I factored it out, so nothing gets written here. And it does say check, even though I already know it's right. But I'll show the check anyway. Draw our favorite arrows. <laughs> so I get negative 6 x squared y plus 12 x y minus 12 y which is exactly what we started with <laughs>